everybody loves an invitation. And so on today, we invite each of you to, to come, come dine with, with us. us. And so what we have seen is that there is real power in an invitation. Deandra and I actually curated our friendship and grew to <laughs> know and love each other yeah. over the power of me inviting her to ride to and from church. Now, she did not want to do that. Truth be told, but over time she obliged and this is what it's blossomed into. Yes. Um, and so what we realized is that as a result, we've had many meals together, both natural and spiritual. And so on today, what we've done is invite a few of our close friends, people we know and love to share their experiences about spiritual nourishment and divine invitations. Absolutely. And so welcome to the Private Pursuit series, Come Dine With Me. Welcome to The Private Pursuit. My name is Kalana. And I'm Deandra. And today we have a very special guest with us. This is Kanisha Brown. And her topic for today is Hits the Spot. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, well, hi everybody. I'm Kanisha Brown. Um, I work for DC government, mainly with the homeless population. I'm also a mental health therapist. Yes. And I'm a full-time mommy. Yes. yes, we love that. Shout out to all the moms. Yes. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get started into this interview, and we're so excited to have you here. Um, as you know, our topic is hit the spot, and so we want to know from you, um, what is something that used to fill you, um, but now kind of dulls in comparison to your time with God or your, you know, the things of God? Um, something that used to, I, I don't know if it's like more so like a thing other mm -hmm. than a state of mind. I know mm -hmm. in my past I would go towards doubt and so now that I have God in my life now and I'm like I don't live in that space anymore yeah, that's if I'm good. gonna do something I'm gonna do it yeah no more like I'm gonna try I'm just gonna execute like yeah make plan and execute I love that okay so I I want to highlight that a little bit more because I never thought about a mindset feeling me and when you said that doubt used to feel you I think yeah. you should elaborate a little bit more about that for our listeners yes. because I don't think people would have ever considered a mindset as something that used to sustain them yeah tell us a little bit more I think um with that sometimes I'm fearful of how far I can go because then mm. I feel like I have to maintain it once I get there come on yeah. but when you know that it's not you doing it come on and help doing it along the way you don't live in this space of fear and you're like the sky is the limit yeah Stars are the limit. yeah you all yeah. that and I think also with that I have to be mindful of who I'm around because mm. if they're also operating in doubt, I don't want that to seep into me. That's so good. Come Listen, on. <laughs> okay, so it does matter who's around you. Yeah. And I think that that's been the theme of a lot of the things that we've been talking about. But I love what you said about the doubt piece because doubt creeps in, mm. right? Like you might not have even known that there was doubt or whatever, fill it in with any type of mindset that people might have, worry, confusion, mm -hmm. um, even uh, anxiety yeah. or um, just fear in general. Like. I, Fear can consume a person yeah. and sometimes it sneaks in and you don't realize that you're worshiping fear more than you worship God yeah. or that you're bowing to doubt more than you're you're looking to God to to bring you through and lead you. Mm -hmm. And so I love what you said about the fact that um, whatever you can't sustain something, mm. but you know that if God brings you to it, then he's the one that yeah. has to then sustain it. And I think that's beautiful because a lot of people are trying to bring themselves to things yeah. and, and sustain it on their own. And it's just not profitable. It does not profit them at all. And then you end up having to backpedal mm. on um, what, cause here, okay. A lot of people are saying something was God mm -hmm. and it wasn't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then they have to try to produce a God thing on a human notion. Yes. That's a lot. <laughs> that is. <laughs> and so I think we have to be very careful. And all of this came from what you said. Like this didn't, I didn't call myself to yeah. this. And so because you said it, God, 
you have to make it happen. Yeah. I, this is not on me. I can now go back to you and say, look, God, I'm just following what you said. I'm just believing your word, yeah. right? I'm standing on your promise. And so because you said it, I believe it. And I believe I can walk this out and I can cast down fear. I can cast down doubt. But when I say it, mm -hmm. cause co let's be clear, Kalana in and of herself mm -hmm. has no power. It's only when God breathes yeah. on it that something happens. Yeah. And so that was good. Yeah. I'm a child. You, go, that you was, just helped a lot of people. I just wanted to that put was that out so there. That was so good. <laughs> that was so good. And so don't lean on your own understanding, your yeah. own notion, your own power. It's going to fail you every single time. Yeah, every time. Mm. Okay. Praise him. <laughs> so next question. When did you feel a shift in your hunger towards the things of God? Um, well, I'm a PK, so I feel like it was always... Come on, PK. Day. Hold on, wait. Shout out to all the PKs. <laughs> what was... Okay, before we even get into that, what was the experience yes. like of being a PK? For those who don't know what PK is, please break that down. Yeah. Yes. Now, we want the whole truth, yes. but give us... So, PK is Preacher's, Preacher's Kid. Kid. Yes. Give us, yeah. give us what that was like. You're in church all day. <laughs> she said, oh, I oh you want to know the real? You was going to be in them services from sunup to sundown. Um, being a PK was, as I get older, I realized it was a good thing to have a foundation. Yes. Like, it was something my mom instilled in me, like, early, like, even if I don't have the answer, you better pray. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, something as simple as I lost my barrette on the way home from school. Look at you. <laughs> Listen, but no, seriously, I think sometimes we forsake being able to go to God for the littlest, smallest things. Yes. yes. I, let me tell you something. I'd be like, Lord, help. I need, I can't find, it. Be, like, I'll be on a call for work and my pen will stop where I'd be like, Lord, I need this ink to come on through because I got to capture this note. Like, whatever it is, I just think we have to get in the habit of involving God yeah. and that goes back to our dependency on mm -hmm, him. Mm -hmm. So, okay, PK, you was in church, yes. but your mom instilled the prayer from mm -hmm. the beginning. From the beginning. Um... It wasn't always easy because when you're a kid, all you see is just being in church and mm -hmm. you see other people catching the Holy Ghost and you don't yes. know what that really means yeah. for yourself yes. until, until you almost are at a point where you're, I guess, for me, I got as I got older in my adulthood when I was transitioning from college to coming to live in D.C. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I knew I didn't want to go back home mm -hmm. as soon as I graduated and I, I had a whole plan. Like, <laughs> Come on, plan. I job in D.C. Yes. The night I graduated, I was like, Mom, I'm not coming home. Mm -hmm. But I think even once I did that, I still had to figure out how to sustain because yeah. you're an adult when you're transitioning, but you're not. Like, Listen. I never know what it was like to really pay bills. Come on. So <laughs> for me, that was like, I knew my hunger had shifted because mm. I was like, if I want to continue to be able to not go back home, I had mm. to lean on the one who even put me here in the first place. Kanisha, yeah. all right, that's good. The second part of this question deals with when did righteousness start to become a part mm -hmm. of your appetite? So we can have a hunger for God mm -hmm. and there's this there's two parts of it, right? You want God. And a lot of times when we're in our immature levels of our faith, mm -hmm. we seek God because we need him to do something yeah. for us. Mm -hmm. But then there comes a time when you start walking your life out so that you can do what he wants yeah. you to do for him. Mm -hmm. And so at what point did that righteousness start to become part of your appetite? Mm. I would say when I became a mom. Mm. My God. All right. Explain that. I was always supposed to be somebody's fine auntie. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Look fine on. Shout out. Hold on. Shout out to all the fine aunties. I'm currently Listen, one of them. <laughs> I'm not even an aunt. I, well, maybe I am an auntie. I just, I love the kids, but I still, mm. do, I'm going to be a mom. You're going to be a mom. Listen, but, but I'm going to enjoy the fine fly auntie, auntie okay? phase. Praise yes. him. <laughs> um, but then... And I always said to God, like, now that I have this child, I want to be a good steward over this child. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Not mine, she's yours. Come on, yeah. that's so, so I good. I have to live righteously so that she can learn to walk up right. Come on. And at the end of the day, I'm we're all we're not always going to be here. So mm -hmm. I want her to know, like, that example. Like, yes. My mom lived a righteous, like, yes. not a 
holier than thou, but righteous. Like, yeah. come on. To do what God wanted her to do. That's so good. Okay, okay so because I want you to elaborate for some of our viewers who are parents now and share with them kind of your experience with hungering after righteousness that may have started with because I'm a parent what is that how did that impact your own personal life in terms of just when she's out of my sight right like how did that spill over listen it's scary because my my child is nine now so she's in school mm -hmm. and she yeah. learns things from mm -hmm. her peers yeah and, and I know you know what we teach in our household and so there's a lot of things that I have to use my discernment and mm. how do I explain this to her? Yeah. yeah. When is the right time to explain yes. it to her and not to teach her to dibble and dabble? Like, come on. You, this might be what everybody else is doing. But Hello. This, well, what you going to do? Let me tell different. you something a black mom will do. <laughs> uh, black, I don't care what anybody else. I, I just think that that's universal. When you grow up in a black household, <laughs> you are for sure to hear. I don't care what Timmy and Johnny and Susie are doing. Hmm. But here, here, this is what you going to do. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's good. And also just teaching her to have her own mindset because I'm that's not good. always going to be the voice that yes. she has. I want her to learn to listen to her own voice. Yeah. 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 And she knows like this goes against my moral compass and mm -hmm. the things that I want to do. Mm -hmm. Like this ain't for me. Yeah. So, I think that's when I that's No, powerful. that's so I'm good. Powerful. I think sometimes we forget even if we can't get it together for ourselves, we'll get it together for our kids. Yes. Like, that's a different type of love mm -hmm. when you want to make sure, like, I don't have this all figured out, but I'm actively trying to figure it out mm -hmm. so that your future can be better. So yeah. that you don't have to fall into the same pits that I fell mm. into. And so I think um, when we talk about hitting the spot, mm. that's that translates through the bloodline. Yeah. And so your mom tried to do, you know, being a PK, there was a certain level that she said that translated to you and now you're translating stuff onto your daughter and it just continues mm -hmm. and I think sometimes we don't understand how important that is yeah. like that's a blessing because everyone doesn't start out being introduced to God in that way yeah. um, they have to come to God a different way mm -hmm. and sometimes it's a hard way mm -hmm. and so being introduced to God um, in the way that you have been I think is beautiful there's a lot of funny stories that you can tell like being in church all day as a preacher's kid i, I like know just you got a story yeah no <laughs> <laughs> she like no we just gonna let no but i just remember like on those sundays when it's like two service sundays oh and you just and you gotta do the fellowship hall work because we had to work in the fellowship <laughs> that hall. fellowship hall and then you can't eat till everybody else <laughs> eat i don't like that that's i just <laughs> You know, it's a little it's a it's a tinge of trauma there it's a bit it's a tinge of trauma but no I think that <laughs> that taught us so much right yeah. and we can laugh about it now but I also think it it undergirded us with something yeah. that a lot of people now are missing honor come on honor serving yes humility mm -hmm. listen because I'm I don't know about y'all. I'm a food person. Come Amen. on. <laughs> and so, hilarious. <laughs> we's going to eat over here. Okay? We are definitely going to have us a meal. Star. And so, but like watching all these people go in front of you, it was like, I don't know why that stood out to me yes. when I was a kid, but it's like, even when we had guests, if you were a member of the church, you ate last. The guests ate first. And so that it taught us how to listen. put others in front of us and give deference to those who are visiting. Yeah. And then for the leaders... So the, my mama, my grandma, all the ladies of the church, they would be in the kitchen fixing the place. The kids would serve yeah. the leader. So, like, it was... And as a kid, I was like... What we go eat? I'm right. Like, is that piece of Especially chicken? when you know the food is good. good. Do you know how, like, <laughs> first of all, I'm literally serving plates of stuff I want to keep. <laughs> and so you got it. I got to smell. And you know, I don't, is it more left? Like, is where did y'all put my plate to the side? Sometimes you didn't have a plate to Listen, the side. Listen, and so that's <laughs> like that whole, like, um, it's like the giving, yeah. right? Like be, the sacrifice yeah. that you learn in those moments moments is so powerful it's the same sacrifice that you have to sacrifice for a child yeah. in motherhood people talk about all the sacrifices they've had to make for their kids to live better and have better yeah. than what they had and so 
all of that is super powerful. Yes. Whew. Okay, next question. So, again, hit the spot. We want to make sure we're keeping our viewers along with yes. us. And so when you ever have a good meal, you're like, oh, that hit the spot, right? So we want to know what has been, like, one of the most satisfying experiences that you've had with God that just was like, oh, no, that, that was it, God. That, that did it. I don't know if it's just one moment. Mm -hmm. I just think it's just knowing that there's no limits. Mm. Tell us like, more. Well, if I think it, if I say it, if if it's in God's will, I can have it. Yeah. Like, there's just that's good to me. I don't. You better catch that for yourself. If I think it, if I say it, if it's in God's if will, it's in God's will, mm -hmm. I can have it. Yeah. I don't. Y'all do what y'all want, but I'm gonna catch that for me. Yes. What? That's good. I That's that. real good. I love that. Tell us more. I keep going. Because this is good to me. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was really, that was really good. That, that whole thing about you will have exceedingly and abundantly. Like when you really live in that space yeah. of knowing, it's like nothing is off limits to you. You yeah. can have a job with a salary that you know you probably <laughs> don't deserve don't child deserve. you could drive a car yeah. that you know like lord i don't even know how i'm gonna pay for this by the yeah. time i drive off the lot listen you yeah you can have a house and be like lord the mortgage is due when how and you said exceedingly abundantly yeah i think even during my biggest thing was probably now if i think of a moment during the pandemic mm -hmm. where everybody yeah. was just Losing. Yes. Like, yes. Frantic. It was the most peaceful wow. place I'd ever been in. With Ooh, God. Wow. That's good. Like, I didn't want for anything. I didn't worry for anything. Yeah. Like it just everything was always taken care of. And even if it wasn't, like I had to replace a roof. I ain't never replaced a roof before in my life. <laughs> and I told God, this your house. So what we gonna do? Come and, on. And he just made it happen. So that's what I said. Ooh, you I was preaching to me. In that space of just yeah. knowing that God takes care of things for yeah. you. Like I mean, I love it. Question, yeah. That sounds very satisfying. <laughs> no, that is the thing. And I think a lot of people are looking for everything else. That, like the house doesn't satisfy me. Mm -hmm. The car won't set. The job doesn't satisfy. But I'll, I can have all of those things yeah. and God can still satisfy yeah. me. I think that that's like, ooh. I used to think that because I had certain things, mm -hmm. I couldn't ask God for anything more. Okay, now, Kanisha. Come on. And... Just in spending time with him, he's like, no, you ask and you will receive. Yeah. Like, yeah. There is no limit to my love. Yeah. Come on. That is so good. I think we start mm -hmm. to feel like, oh, but, you know, I have it better than them or yeah. I'm not going through mm -hmm. that. And so I should just be grateful for what I have. No, I, I can come to you boldly. Yeah. And I can put my petition and lay that on the altar before you. And because you're my father, yeah. because I'm your daughter, yeah. you hear me. And so that is that is such a great point that you highlighted. I think sometimes we do like, I don't know, almost step back away from mm -hmm. the fullness mm -hmm. of what we could have in God because we have more than the next person. Mm -hmm. But no, I want everything you have for me. So I'm going to, I'm going to put you in the spot, just the teens. You got this. And I'm Hilarious. Just go with the, the leading of the Holy Spirit. So one thing I've heard you say multiple times just now has been no limits. And so I just want you to look dead in the camera and speak to the people and empower them about trusting that we serve a limitless God. Yeah. Because I feel like there's a grace on you to help people break that mindset of limiting themselves, but more importantly, limiting God. Okay. Mm, help me, Holy Ghost. Come yeah. on. He <laughs> sure enough will. Um, I don't even know where to be. Just start talking. I think it's just a space that you just live in. First, it starts in your mind. Like, yeah. when you get yourself out of your own head and really just ask God what is his will and his purpose for your life, everything else will just flow to you. You won't have to chase anything. I know we live in a culture of, like, chasing the bag and we're on our grind, but, like, it would be so peaceful just to be at peace and know that these things will be added unto you. And when you get in that mindset, there is no limit for what you can have. Yeah, I love that. So the scripture that goes with what Kanisha said is, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And, and okay, <laughs> and his righteousness. Yes. Every time DeAndre say the scripture, I be like, and his righteousness. Because we be seeking God and forget the righteousness part. Mm -hmm. I'm so sorry. No, I just got good. the... And that's the... Don't thing. lead and the righteousness off. 
And Kanisha has already touched on the righteousness too, right? And so then all of these things, it says, and all of these things. And if you go back, I want to say this is in Matthew where he's talking about this and the scriptures that preceded is saying, um, what about the birds in the sky? They don't yeah. work, they don't toil. And if God takes care of them, how much more will your how heavenly father more? take care of you? And so we have to remember that God has esteemed us. When he created us, he created us with a sense of like, that's mine. Yes. I did that. My name is on that. Yes. And if we think about that, that's the God that we're praying to. And that's the God that we're serving. That's the God that we are giving our our life unto how much more will he do for you who honors him daily who yeah. serves him without limits that's you are tapping into a limitless God yeah. there's nothing that is hard for him the only thing I've ever seen God not do is change who he said he was he has never failed his word never like failed. if you want to tell what he can, can't do he can't fail he can and so when you think about the word of God, the life of God, your walk with God, your pursuit of God, there's so much in it that will satisfy. Yeah. And so we just invite you to let it hit the spot. And as Kanisha said, take those limits off yeah. and watch the limitless God blow your mind. I mean, you better close that thing out, DeAndre. <laughs> that was good. I didn't want you to stop talking. <laughs> okay, so this conversation has been amazing. Yes. Please tell the people how they can continue to stay in contact with you, how they can follow you. Put it out there. Yes. I mean... <laughs> I'm on Instagram, but I barely use it. Okay. <laughs> Which is changing. Yes. Mm -hmm. She's going to be using it more. She's going to be out there. We're Give the people your this. Instagram. What's your Instagram handle? Um, It's I live, I live for underscore Kanisha. I yes. live for underscore Kanisha. Okay. <laughs> I live for Kanisha. She, listen, and, and you got a lot. I live for my daughter, but then I was like, oh. I was like, uh, you were here before her. Like, listen. Too, so and this is, you. and this is why she's going to be <laughs> on the social and the media. Exactly. Because she has a word from God to the people of God. And so woman of God. Go for it. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank we appreciate, yes, we appreciate you. And thank you so much for like showing what it means to balance motherhood, yeah. a career um, and family, yeah. everything, um, but also want to keep a standard. Yeah. And so thank you for mm -hmm. that. We honor that. Um, and you bless me because yes. I can have it all and I'm coming for it all. And so should you. Yes. And so as we continue to pursue God with the private pursuit, we pray that you take the limits off.